Hi, everyone. My name is Ben, and you're listening to A Daily Dose of English. This is a short, simple podcast that you can listen to every day to improve your English. And you can find all of the transcripts for episodes and more on benslanguagelab.com. I'm really glad you can make it today. In this episode, we're going to be talking about pets. Because I've always had pets. I think pets are really quite important for a household to be vibrant and alive. And I think that owning pets is a really good overall experience. Yes, they can be expensive and annoying, and they can add a lot of extra complications to your life. But the payoff is really worth it when you're somewhere for a very long stretch of time. If you're living in a city long term, maybe with a family, then I really do think it's worth it. I've lived most of my life with dogs. My family always had dogs, typically one, um, but then, well, actually at the beginning one, rather, and then we ended up having two for uh, well over 10 years. Um, I think almost like 14 years we had two dogs, and it was a really nice contrast. One of the dogs was much larger, and the one was a lot smaller, um, the small one, she was actually a lot more energetic and louder and crazier. And the large one was the calm, large, teddy bear-esque um, dog. And they really made a good duo matching or balancing each other's energies. Um, and so it made a good good mix, honestly. Um, and so I do think there's a lot of benefits to having multiple animals, especially because they can care for each other. They can be friends. You know that sort of that sort of thing, um, and I really like dogs. Really, all sorts of dogs I think are just excellent pets. Um, yeah, they can be a lot uh, feistier or stronger and cause more problems. They're harder to train than cats might be, but I th I think that they end up just being I don't know more loyal. They're more they're nicer to have around. I think is how I want to phrase this. Um, but for the past couple years, I haven't really lived with pets because I've been living on my own. I've been moving more often, and it doesn't really make sense to get a dog or a cat if you're going to be um, not exactly, if you're not sure if you're going to live somewhere for uh, even up to 10, 20 years, because moving with pets is a huge pain um, and having to take care of them in a new place and understanding, especially if it's cross uh, border, like I, I don't live in the same country anymore. And that's a, an even bigger hassle trying to make sure you have the right papers and getting them abroad and all, all this stuff is, can be a big, um, pain. So I decided not to get any pets for myself, despite really quite wanting one. I would, it'd be really nice to have a dog. However, I recently, um, am now living with three cats um, in my new my new apartment, and it's been really nice, actually. I've actually never lived long term with cats before this, or like been their uh, one of their their caregivers, I guess you could say, one of their one of the people that takes care of them. And so this is a bit of a new experience for me, but uh, it's been really nice because I I was sort of craving that animal connection. I think before I had really wanted to have animals in the house. This other presence or creature to to be with to exist with because they have a very different energy than humans do i specifically like um like their warmth and and oh, the cuteness obviously is great and and they do funny things right because they're not people with real thoughts or um the same kind of emotions or whatever and so they do goofy things that we don't expect um, and so I'm living with three cats right now. Um, their names are Jengibre, Tulio, and Navi. And they all are very different. They have very different personalities. And it's really interesting to see them uh, exist, I guess. Um, Jengibre is the, is the youngest and the smallest and the definitely the weirdest. He doesn't know how to retract his claws. So he'll grab things all the time, first off, like anything, will grab my feet, my hands, the blanket, whatever it is. But then he can't like disconnect his claws. He doesn't know how, and so we get stuck. 
and he looks very goofy sometimes because he'll like fall asleep with his arms fully extended in front of him, like attached to something, and it looks very comical. Um, but he is very cute and looks at me with his big blue eyes, lays in my lap, is definitely um, a very good, cute kitty. Um, okay, no, he's not behind me right now. He's not in his favorite spot. Um, but yeah, that's Hankibity, which is ginger in English, which is a good name, I think, for a cat. Um, the other one, Tulio, is um, a lot, he's very talkative. You can say he likes to meow, he likes to hang out with you, he likes to come up to you. Um, he likes to be pet, he likes to be cozy. Um, he licks himself a lot. He definitely has a bit of a problem. Um, he sort of licked off part of it, part of his fur on his back. Um, but he is very, very affectionate um, and lovely to be around uh, in general, I think. He's just a, a good little kitty. Um, likes to climb up on stuff. And so it's, it's funny to look up on the shelf and, and see a cat like above your head. Um, it's, it's a good presence. And he likes to sleep in my office as well behind me, um, right against the window on a shelf. Um, the sun doesn't hit it that well, but I can totally understand why it might be warm and nice. And then the last cat, Navi, Navi is um, a big fraidy cat. <laughs> she is very frightened of pretty much everything. If you so much as walk towards her, she'll run away and she'll hide in the smallest cozy like littlest corner of the apartment and like she found a spot under the cabinets where there's a hole that she can barely fit into it's a tiny but like it leads back behind the cabinets it can't be very large back there i can't even see but she'll she loves to go back there because it's totally safe from the outside world um, when we first brought her here she didn't leave for like two days uh, she stayed in there um, I think she came out at night because I could hear the uh, like the scratching of the walls. I think she was struggling to get out. Um, but yeah, she is. But when she does come out, when she does come up to you, she's very affectionate. She'll press herself against you, ask for pets, um, and is very, very sweet. But hopefully she calms down a bit more and is less skittish because, I don't know, I feel bad if I walk out in, into the living room and she's on the couch because she's going to run away. Like, I don't want her, I don't need her to run away. Like, I'm not even going to go close to you. <laughs> Just calm down. It's fine. Um, but yeah, it's been really nice having them around. Um, a downside, I will say, is that I now uh, enjoy watching TV more, which is not really something that I want to do more of, but it's a lot cozier and nicer when there's cats there with you that are going to be in your lap and keep you warm. Um, and so it's a, a bit of a, I mean, it's a, it's overall, it's a win-win or it's a win situation, but, um, it is funny that, uh, I, I guess watching TV became more, um, desirable now that there's animals around to keep you warm and, um, company. Um, but yeah, uh, I know that a lot of people never had pets or don't like pets, but, uh, and I think part of that is because of how people maybe grew up. They're not used to them. They haven't really been around animals for that long. Um, but in a lot of ways, I think it's a just a good experience for people because you learn lots of important skills. You are forced to, to do certain things like go outside or um, do simple chores, keep things clean. And so there's a lot of actual sort of beneficial skills that you learn by owning animals, which I think is just a, a good um, uh, benefit as well. Um, I've also seen that it, it's good for kids as they're growing up because having animals in the house and kind of inherently makes it a little bit dirtier and they um, sort of uh, get used to having animals around. They um, build up immunities. They, are, it's, they become healthier overall by having animals around that aren't going to get them sick, but are going to expose them to more bacteria or germs or whatever. And plus, I think it's just a generally a good experience for kids, kids to um, have connections with animals. They generally like animals. They have fun with them. 
Uh, they still don't have to take care of them yet, but they can learn some responsibilities. Their parents can teach them how to take care of an animal, whatever it might be. And at a certain point, kids are going to have to learn how to deal with death. And it's a lot better for that to be an animal or um, something that is maybe not as important as a close family member, because that's also going to come up at some point in somebody's life. And if they have a little bit of practice with a um, an animal, I think it's just a b better overall experience. However, there is the classic trope, the stereotype of parents saying that their animals uh, didn't die. They had to go to a special farm because they got too old. Um, but that's just lying to your kids, and I don't really think that's necessary. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's about all that I have for you today. I think that's enough on the topic of animals. I hope that you enjoyed listening to this little podcast here and that you maybe learned some interesting words or found out something that you didn't know before. But thank you so much for listening, and I will see you tomorrow.